Welcome back to the show. We are out on the plaza right now. We're hoping for some sunshine, maybe later today, because all of us are getting our hands dirty gardening these days. And one question we hear a lot is how can I attract more hummingbirds to my backyard? Well, look at this guy right here. Is oh la la. the person who would know this, gardening expert Cisco Morris. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's a total delight. It's so cool to be in person with you. I, I can know. touch you. Oh, 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 isn't it wonderful? Ah, it's amazing. We are so glad you're here, and we're so glad that you brought these beautiful plants all from your backyard. Yeah, all from my side of the garden. I didn't go into Mary's at all. I learned she's a lot. watching. I learned a lot about that. They have separate <laughs> his and hers gardens. Very uh, good to know. That might be the way. You said it's cheaper than marriage counseling. Way cheaper than marriage counseling, I'll tell you what. Here you have it. So all these flowers are designed to attract hummingbirds. How many different kinds of humming hummingbirds are in western Washington? We only have two kinds, typically, two? yeah. Okay. So the rufous hummingbird is a smaller one, and it's kind of an orange color. It's the tough guy. Okay. It chases everybody out of the Ooh. garden. It chases me out of the garden Ooh. sometimes. They are just really tough little birds. The other one is Anna's hummingbird. It's bigger and its whole head and gorget are bright red right oh, now. Wow. They come up right in front of you, just sit in front of you if you wear a red sweatshirt really? or something. Yeah. I had one try and stick its beak in my ear once. It was very irritating. I was trying to enjoy a Brussels sprout casserole. What can you do, you know? I mean, that is kind of amazing, actually. I'm not surprised. Um, I'm trying to disentangle this yeah, one plant here. The this, is, here. this is so beautiful. It looks like you said it's a member of the hibiscus family, but I, it, speaking of red, do hummingbirds only like red? Birds? That's a great question. Everything I've got here, so like this agapanthus, this is from South Africa, but South Africa has two birds that only feed on nectar. Oh. They can't stand still in the air and fly backwards and do all those cool things. You know that we're the only uh, North and South America are the only continents in the world that have hummingbirds. Really? There's none in Asia, none in Europe, none anywhere. I did not know that zoological fact. Oh, we are so lucky we to have so, them. We are so I oh, do man. love a hummingbird. And I know hummingbirds would love a plant like this. Look that at how is, unique that is. That's a clematis called Ruguchi, or it's Roguchi. So, and uh, it, it kind of scrambles up through my plant. Hummingbirds are on it every minute. They test everything to see if they can find any nectar in them. Mm -hmm. If there's nectar in them, they just keep going back to them and back to them. Now, I have a lot of nectar in my hummingbird feeder, but I've noticed they've stopped coming by. This happens this time of year to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for somebody like me that has eight million different kinds of flowers in their garden. Uh -huh. They're gonna hang out, they prefer feeding on flowers than uh, feeders. Really? Yeah, so the more you can plant, they'll still go to the feeders sometimes, but the more that you can plant, the more variety of plants, then the much better chance you're gonna get to have hummingbirds. Now, do most hummingbird plants need full sun? Just every one of these does okay. right here, you know? Like, look at this thing. That's beautiful. There, there are about 20 of these stalks oh, sticking up. I love up. this. It's called Watsonia. It's Watsonia. another South African plant, but it's easy to grow, but nobody ever grows this thing. I love that. It looks like little stars. Yeah, it's a bulb. And are, are these easy to grow, oh, Cisco? Uh, these are the easiest. These? Yeah, check these things out. So there's three of these in there. Yeah, look I at the color these. on these. So these are called crocosmias, and they're a little bulb in the ground, and they just come back year after year. That's Fern Hill. This is Hellfire. Oh, la, la. Oh, la, la. This one's uh, Diablo. <laughs> so these are really cool plants, you know, and the hummingbirds love them, and they add so much beauty to your garden, too, I you know? I love it. I love it. All right, well, before we let you go, any last words on, on hummingbirds and, and what we can do to attract them? Well, uh, have moving water. If moving you can put water, a fountain okay. where the water uh, drains down from one uh, level to another. Mm -hmm. I have this old man that spits water into a basin three feet below. Hi, that uh, sounds lovely. Oh, it's really cool. The hummingbirds come drink the water where it comes out of his mouth. 
and ride it all the way down, drink into the beach, and come up, do it again and again, but don't laugh at a hummingbird. No? I was watching him do that with a friend, and we were laughing. When I was walking out that narrow trail, one of those hummingbirds hit me right in the ear. Then it sat in front of me going, beep, 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 beep. He's like, yelling all at right, you? all right, I won't laugh, you know? See, they're attracted to your ears, uh, Mr. Morris. That's it, it's up out my ears. <laughs> Something about you. Thank you so much. Oh, this is so great. And we're going to have all your tips on our website. You can just go there, get more information, all the names of everything you need to know, and have the hummingbirds come over to your house.